Okay, Grand Rising, it's Shay Seeking, and welcome back. This is going to be part two of In the World, but not of the world. I was interrupted, and so we're going to go ahead and go right back in. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so it's saying something about being uh, compelled to follow suit with uh, uh, maintaining a trade um, and living as um, this person is not wealthy. And then it says another... Um, objectionable feature about that kind of method is that it squeezes my weaker brother in the same line of business. I am acquainted with many of them. Some are widows trying to make an honest living by selling goods, but I am compelled to throw all my better feelings to the wind and wade in, no matter whom it injures. This is a sad confession for one who is bidding for a position of the assistance of our Lord in lifting of mankind out of the chasm, um, uh, the chas, some, <laughs> uh, of selfishness from which they must be saved in the age which we believe to be close at hand. I am not trying to get you to justify my actions in this matter but desire your opinion as <clears throat> to advisable uh, course of God's uh, professed children engaging in business during the present time when it is a case of the big fish eating the smaller one. Yours in Christ. In reply, the conditions you name are common to nearly every form of business and prevail throughout the civilization world increasingly. It is a part of the general trouble of our time. The increase of machine capacity and the increase of human family both contribute to reduce wages and make steady employment more uh, apologies, precarious. More men seek to engage in business and com competition and small profit while beneficial to the poor are commercially killing the small store and high prices in consequence. Small stores and small factories are giving way to large ones, which by reason of better and more economical arrangements permit better service and lower prices. Lower stock of fresher goods at lower prices and the better service are to the general advantage of the public as compared with the old time small shop and stale goods, high prices and careless service. Even though temporarily some poor widows are worthy ones may suffer through mental, physical and financial uh inability to keep up with the new order of things. Now, um I'm I'm thinking of widows as also being fatherless. I mean, well, in a sense, fatherless. Um, and even the fact that I think this book maybe was written in the eighties, if I'm not mistaken. But the fact that, you know, we, we've we seen this coming for a long time, the breaking down of um, the small business. Um, and again, you know, I don't know. I haven't looked at the numbers to see where we are after this whole thing that just happened. But um, <laughs> when I think old time small shops, I don't think stale goods. I think, you know, high quality because it was coming straight from farm to table. Um, where today in those these big box stores that they're probably talking about that most of the stuff is probably not the best because they have to mass produce so much and you know again you guys you know hopefully can take the difference <laughs> um yeah so it says and even these if they can take a broad benevolent view of the situation may rejoice in the public welfare, even though it enforces an unfavorable change in their own affairs. They may rejoice with those that are benefited and wait patiently for the coming kingdom, which will make God's blessings more common to all than at present. But only those who have the new nature and its love can be expected to view things thus unselfishly. 
The present commercial competition is not, therefore, an unmixed evil. It is one of the greatest lessons being given to the world as a preparatory study before, oh, they call it a study, huh? <laughs> before entering the great millennial age, when the business of the world will be largely, if not wholly, on a socialistic footing, not for the wealth or av advantage of the individual, but for the general we welfare. Meanwhile, however, the selfish competition strain grows more gallingly, uh, continually, to those possessed of noble, generous impulses, whether Christians or not. We are glad to note your own appreciation of the subject and your dissatisfaction with the present conditions. Our advice is that you keep a sharp lookout, and if you see some other branch of business beset with competition and therefore more favorable, make a change. If not, or until you find more favorable business or more favorable conditions, we advise that you continue where, where you are and modify your course um, to some extent. And again, that's that even makes me think about even when it comes to um, just um, the channel, you know, and how to operate. And even I'm going to be doing um, other things that, you know, um, I'm trying to figure out how to modify them in order for them to be... Um, a little bit more uh, beneficial. Um, okay, to some content, uh, some extent. Okay, so again, for like even me, it's very calming for me to sit here and just read this article to you guys. It's just something that you know, um, it's me um, doing the doing the best I can to stay somewhat organized to give something um, that will help somebody again um, if they want to you know listen um it helps me as well while i'm doing it um and it's just something that i enjoy doing so if i can just share one thing that i think is beneficial a day um whether it's in the scriptures or not um it was on my heart to do it and so you know it's a uh, something that I, I i enjoy doing but you know, there are other things, you know, that I can speak on. Again, um, getting into the groove of speaking more about uh, uh, just letting loose and just speaking with you guys in general, you know, about things, um, hopefully in the work soon, like one day a week or something. <clears throat> Okay. It says divide matter as evenly as you can between the three conflicting interests, your own, your competitors, and your patrons and neighbors' interests. If your business is meeting expenses and affording a reasonable profit, endeavor to keep it there, but do not push it in the endeavor to become rich for that uh for they that will to be uh, rich fall into temptation and snare. Uh, First Timothy six and nine. We should avoid all dishonorable competition or meaningless to, uh, or meanness towards competitors. Um, you know, agreed. Again, and and that's something that you know I don't even like to think about that because I know with business you should look at your competitors to see you know uh, what the industry or what what's going on. You know. Um, and how to navigate, but never, you know, do exactly what somebody else is doing, I guess, you know. Um, and um, again, I don't even like that aspect of looking, you see, or asking questions. But again, it's something that, again, if you're going to be ser serious about business, you're going to have to know what's out there, how much things are going for, what colors, what, you know, just depending on what you're doing, you know. <clears throat> We should avoid all dishonorable competition or uh, meanness towards competitors. Um, you know, again, I'm pretty sure we've all, you know, experienced something like that at some point in time in our lives. Um, and any misrepresentation of goods to customers, justice and honesty must be carefully guarded at any cost. Then add all the moderation in favor of your competitor that love may suggest and that circumstances permit. We are not forgetting the injunction. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. 
Exodus 23.02, nor counseling the slightest uh, compromise with injustice. Your questions, we take it, is not whether you may do unjust, but whether love will permit you to do all that justice would not object to and the custom sanctions. The worldly heart does not scripple about such stri uh, strifles. It is your new nature <laughs> whose law is love that would prefer to see your competitor prosper. A beautiful thing. And longs to do good unto all men as it is um, as, it, as it has opportunity, especially to the household of faith. And again, I feel like I realize that when it does come to faith in the word that um, we all have these little, you know, it's almost like not saying it is <laughs> my father's house has many mansions. So again, um, in that sense, I'm just using it as an example that um, in this kingdom that, you know, is possibly been, been built on earth, um, you know, um, and just, you know, uh, in a spiritual manner, um, that many people have been given different positions. And again, today I was even questioning like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know, like, um, am I chosen to speak the word? You know, uh, you know, um, is this, uh, beneficial to anyone, you know, um, other than myself, that's my intentions to have it beneficial for, you know, many. And even though I feel like some people don't understand that or they don't think that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, that's understandable. But really, I just don't move like that. I don't move where it matters to me that much. And so, again, it's something like that, that that can have you in a situation where you're left behind because, you know, um, you're not really trying to focus on. Like I said, I feel uncomfortable with it, you know, um if you have a sense of someone being a competitor of yours, um, it's, 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 I don't know. It's just an uncomfortable feeling for me, but, um, we all have different tasks to do here and they should be, um, and, 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 and I'm saying if it's a, uh, upright or righteous or divine, um, of a divine nature, then, you know, to each his own, you know, I can't tell another person what, you know, uh, purpose they have here on this plane. Um, that's between them and source. All I can do is say that this is an honorable person. You know, even if I don't just, I don't agree with everything that they say, I, they are doing something that is productive and positive. It may not be exactly what I'm doing, but again, that's their purpose or their, their plan or their journey, uh, and again, as long as it's benefiting the people, it really shouldn't matter. And as long as they do it the way they do it and as well, and people, you know, benefit from it, then, you know, it is what it is. And so all of those different things, I, I just feel like uh, it's important to uh, be okay with up uplifting each other in a sense and not always... Uh, you know, um, thinking of compassion, you know, along with competition. We'll say that, right? <clears throat> because again, every one of those roads has different uh, obstacles and things that come along with them. Um, and, and although I may not understand that other persons, I know how hard I work to try to stay on the road, on mine. So again, if I see you doing your thing, I'm pretty sure you're doing the same thing. And, you know, I appreciate that. Again, so just because it's benefiting the people. Um, and as a whole, we're all taking separate roads, but as a whole, working together, you know, um, builds a stronger foundation, basically. Okay. And again, I'm sure you guys know that, but I, that's just something that I think about a lot. Um, so it says, especially to the household of faith, cultivate this new nature by obeying its law of love in every way possible. If it be possible, so much as lieth in you live peaceably with all men dealing generously and accordingly to love. He who is embowed with the spirit 
of love thinketh no evil towards his competitor and seeketh not his own welfare merely and would not rejoice in a competitor's failure. The difficulty, and again, that's another thing that's kind of hard because, you know, with the age of information, people can think that someone is feeling, but, you know, until, you know, you have a, a real conversation, you know, uh, you could never know where somebody's, you know, you might, there might just be, like I said, a misunderstanding. Um, and then there might be other things that are involved in causing strife or things in between people um, that, you know, could have been avoided um, and, and again, connected or in, in united for a stronger uh, stand front. Um, and again, some some energies know that and that's the reason why I think we're suffering some of those particular things. Uh, because of outside influence and some, you know, some of it. But again, a lot of us, you know, um, should be able to tell the character and the nature of people, especially if they've been putting content out for a while to know that um, most people in these communities are not, you know, um, looking to see anyone fall, right? There might be other things that get in the way, but I don't think that anyone is looking for anybody to fail, Okay. So it says the difficulty is that the whole world, <clears throat> oh yeah, and then, oh, but I think slight <laughs> disagreements, right, can lead to something like that. But it says the difficulty is that the wor the whole world is running on a deprived basis of selfishness, which is quite egregious to love. With some, the plane is higher, and with some lower. Some limit their selfishness to a line of justice. Others descend in selfishness to unjust and dishonesty. And the tendency is always downward. The new creation in Christ must never go below justice and honesty and must seek as much as possible to rise above this highly uh, worldly standard toward perfect love. It is the fault of the present competi uh, competitive system that the interests of the buyer and those of the seller are ev uh, ever in conflict. No power can correct, control, or alter all this except the one power that God has promised, the millennial king, the millennium kingdom, which shall enforce the rule of love and liberate from the uh, propensities and bonds of selfishness, all who, when they see and know the better way, will accept the help than to be provided. Again, because I was just thinking even just right now, it just hit me. Like when it comes to lower income people, why don't, um, you know, why could there ever be a form of a system where you could, instead of giving these people this amount of money every month, sometimes a large amount for uh, food or whatever, you know, they would need um, or they get when people get assistance, why not um, start a program or a small program through that same, uh, through that same uh, construct in order to supply, especially because we know that mostly our single mo mothers that are in need, um, so that people can also learn entrepreneurship skills or even maybe have some kind of uh, benefits where you would be able to uh, start a business or something like that. So then, hey, you know, at some point in time, you'll be able to, you know, uh, depend on that. Because I do think, and not in a disrespectful way, I do think that that was one of the strongest vices that was given to the people um, is that form of assistance, assistance in that manner where somebody can possibly be on it for like 20 years again. And I'm not knocking anybody and I'm not saying there's anything um, potentially wrong with it. What I'm saying is it would be a little bit more beneficial for the nation as a whole if people were given um, another form of opportunity where they can build themselves up and then go on and conquer and then build empires that can be left to children. Um, because again, you can't leave a college, um, uh, and this is not knocking anybody that went to college, you know, um, but you can't leave your, uh, uh, diplomas or bachelors and stuff to your children, you know, um, you can't, uh, 
leave your job at, you know, uh, Walmart or Amazon to your children. So again, I, I think that, oh, right now, especially, <clears throat> right now, especially, um, you know, I've been talking to my young daughters about, uh, you know, uh, small business ideas and one is up and running. Um, and you know, the other one, she, um, you know, and I tell them just because you saw me start and stop, start and stop doesn't mean, you know, that you can't uh, do something better. So anytime they talk entrepreneurship, I'm all excited. <laughs> anytime they talk about a job, then their dad is excited. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's funny, <clears throat> but then again, you know, um, yeah, to each his own, uh, but anyway, we have seen an inevitable under the present uh, social law either to crush the masses of humanity into a mire um, as the slave of wealth and intellect or um, the crash of the present social order under the reign of anarchy. It was one in your room. I can't remember. I think it was on the floor by the closet. And the uh, scriptural declaration that it will be uh, the latter. And that is uh, that this will bring an awful retribution upon all men, rich and poor, learned and ignorant. And by actual uh, demonstration, teach men the folly of selfishness and to help them in future to appreciate the wisdom of God's law of love and that the uh, great tribulation will teach all a fearful but eventually a most profitable lesson again there's a lesson in everything <laughs> uh, we are therefore prepared to examine in our next chapter what the scriptures um, have to tell us respecting the fall of Babylon Christendom and the great struggle in which this age shall end as we have viewed the failure of Christendom to adopt the spirit of Christ's teaching and seen how the knowledge of liberty gained from his teachings were blended with spiritual, uh, with the spirit of evil selfishness. Um, and as from present uh, foreshadowing, we mark the such approach of the dread calamity, anarchy, and every evil work. We see the justice of its permission and read thereon the divine law of retribution. And though we lament the evils which incur the retribution, <laughs> yet realizing its necessity and justice and having learned also the ends of mercy uh, to be attained eventually by this very means, our hearts exclaim, great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou king of nations, Revelations 15. And I think that's it. <laughs> so again, you know, um, to each his own. I mean, I feel like it was very telling. Um, and I feel like, you know, this is a, a crossing point or uh, some kind of something that we're about to go through soon. And, and there are going to be changes and things that are going to be happening um, because of uh, certain things that took place. Um, that may be eye-opening. Um, and again, maybe something that uh, can open up people's eyes to uh, salvation or um, the word in a sense and, and looking at it for what it is instead of in a, a, a religious um, aspect. And um, so I think that's it. Um, we go into 11, chapter 11, I think in this book next, and it's talking about the Battle of Armageddon. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited, but I'm a little bit like, <laughs> so we'll see. But anyhow, uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys coming. Um, gratitude um, for coming and showing support. And again, a lot of people have been coming and joining the group. And I appreciate that. And um, yeah, so I guess I'll see you guys soon. Uh, take care. Um, and uh, 
again. Bye.